Well, I got involved with renewables about 20 years ago. I got involved because I was a private pilot, still am, and I was concerned about the dirt and pollution in the atmosphere. It was quite obvious when I flew into London uh, and Birmingham, the aircraft wanted washing each time I went, and that's not on. I mean, I don't mean from the washing point of view, it means that we're breathing it. So I got involved at, uh, with because of that. There was also another reason. Uh, friends of the Earth and Greenpeace were beginning to say that we were polluting the atmosphere, and everyone said, phooey, that's not true. Well, I could see it was true, physically, and so that was another spur to me getting involved. And the third spur was OPEC, when they put the grips on the West with their oil prices fixation. They had this monopoly, and they tried to raise the prices to a level that suited them, not to the market. So I thought, we don't want to be dependent on other people. So all those things combined together to move me. Quite frankly, if we don't have something like that, we're not going to survive as a race. Uh, fossil fuel is getting shorter and shorter. The amount of CO2 we're pumping into the atmosphere is creating violent weather all over the world already, and it will get worse. And um, I think it'll get to the point where if we don't, if we're not careful in stopping it now, we maybe have a little window of stopping it now before it's irreversible. And once it's irreversible, there's nothing we can do. And most people begin to say it gets irreversible after the, the carbon dioxide extent reaches a certain figure. And uh, we don't know, but is it worth risking? I mean, that's the question. We could use nuclear. Um, the trouble is that uranium is in quite short supply on the planet. And we've had a number of accidents which make us think again. But it's a possibility. It's got lo low CO2 outputs. Uh, we could use fusion. Um, that's not here yet, but it will be uh, an option uh, when it's available. And uh, the only other alternative we've got are renewables, and they're very plentiful, and there's enough renewable energy hitting this planet and on this planet to supply all our power needs. The Earth receives enough sunshine in half a day to power the ne man needs of mankind for a whole year. So that tells you how much energy is coming into the planet from the sun. And it's up to us to use it, it's free. I don't think people are uh, concerned with fossil fuels and they don't have the knowledge. I mean, most people, let's face it, there's a married couple living together, they've got three or four kids, they've got to get the kids up in the morning, got to go to school, they've got to go to work, they come back, they're tired, they put the kids to bed, another day. They don't have time to contemplate things. There are people on this planet who have got time to contemplate, and most of these thinking-type people have come to the conclusion that using fossil fuels is a dangerous game. The amount of fossil fuel being consumed and produced at the moment is about 84 million barrels a day. And uh, if we look at China as an emerging nation, and India, and Africa, if they all reach the same standards that we have in Europe and America, we have a, we're using 15 barrels per head per person per year here. America is using 32 barrels per head per person there. And if China, say, achieves just 12 barrels per head, that's going to require an enormous amount of extra oil, uh, something like 26% of, of the present oil capacity is wanted for China. I'm not counting India or Africa. What, so that isn't there. So what's going to happen is that oil will still be produced, we might come to um, a contemplation where we decide not to use it because of environmental reasons. We haven't reached that stage yet, but we should, in my opinion. And if we do continue to use it, the price will just go up $200 a barrel, $500 a barrel, $1,000 a barrel. And eventually, everyone will be forced onto an alternative system.